been married for how long? Over 27 years. Over 27 years. Look at him though, he look mad. <laughs> you don't look happy, brother. You don't look happy. <laughs> In his wife's murder. Investigators say it came after an argument fueled by steroids and sex. Patricia Spivey was found dead in their bedroom closet. Today we are talking about Renard Spivey, the wife killing TV courtroom bailiff. Renard Spivey, known for his role on the TV court show called Justice for All with Judge Christina Perez, also known as Christina's Court, was born July 20th, 1956. Renard Spivey is accused of killing his third wife, Patricia Spivey, age 52 at the time of her death. Spivey has been married three times. He married his first wife, Heather P. Hogroberks, on April 15, 1978, in Harris County, Texas. He married his second wife, Deborah Melrose, on January 21, 1994, again in Harris County, Texas. And he married his final wife, Patricia Spivey. Marshall Spivey on March 21st, 2015. I don't know why on the TV show he lied and said that he's been married for 27 years because he hadn't. And when the show aired, he hadn't even been married, technically hasn't been married to his wife, Patricia, because he married her in 2015. And this the show that he was on aired 14 years ago. So I don't understand what he was talking about. But moving on, unfortunately, I could not find dates for the divorce, but this is a very odd case. And as I proceed with telling the details, you'll see that a lot doesn't add up. Before his appearance on Christina Court, Bernard Spivey worked for the Harris County Sheriff's Department in 1996 as a detention officer. Two years after working there, he became a deputy. Renard was not happy being just a deputy. In 2001, he appeared in the film Married Men and Single Women. He was also an award-winning bodybuilder, claiming many trophies and awards for his massive physique. Now that you have the background information, let's move on to the crime. On July 28, 2019, at 3.10 a.m., Renard Spivey called the police to report an accidental shooting. However, that is not what investigators found when they arrived on the scene. Bernard Spivey was found with a gunshot wound to the upper portion of his left thigh. He was bleeding and attempting to self-treat his injury. Upon police arrival, Renard told the investigators that he and his wife had tussled over the gun and it accidentally went off. He admitted to the police that he and his wife, Patricia, had been arguing all day. The police determined that Renard's accounts of, of the events were inconsistent with the scene. Patricia was found dead in the closet with two gunshot wounds. One bullet struck her in the heart and lungs, and the other shattered her arm. Both shots were at close range. Investigators also found Patricia's cell phone and three gunshell casings. Next to her body, a 9mm gun was found on a clothes basket. The prosecutor said that the evidence was contradictory to Renard's statement. According to the medical examiner, the bullet went through her arm, causing the bone to break, making it incapable of use. She also had minor bruising on her wrist. The prosecutor also noted that Spivey is right-hand dominant, and he was shot in the left leg, well, more like the upper thigh, which is not consistent with a tussle, especially if Patricia has a shattered arm. Evidence indicates that three shots were fired in the closet, with Patricia taking two, two of those shots, which contradicts Renard's story that he accidentally shot his wife and that the gun accidentally discharged in the struggle. Renard's fingerprints were found on the gun. Renard also had gunpowder on his hands, indicating that he had fired the gun. However, it is not stated if Patricia had any gunpowder on any gunpowder residue on her or if her fingerprints were on the gun as well. Renard Spivey was arrested and charged on July 29, 2019. He posted a $50,000 bail. The prosecutors originally wanted the bail to be set at $100,000 because they thought Spivey was a flight risk. 
but the judge felt otherwise and released him. He also gave Spivey a set of conditions in order to be released. Inside the courtroom, the judge set several conditions for Spivey's bond. It includes wearing a GPS monitor, turning over his passport within the next seven days, a curfew from 3 p.m. to 9 a.m., no alcohol, drugs, or possession of weapons. The judge also said Spivey cannot have contact with Patricia's family. That means he can attend her funeral. The funeral is a private event. Uh, you could go to court and uh, have litigation over this, but what's necessary? And you can have your own private wake for your wife with your own family. Of course, he wanted to participate in the funeral, but he's going to follow the judge's order and not do so. According to Patricia's brother, Ezra Washington, who recounts an argument between Renard and his wife, Patricia, Patricia had found a bottle of pills and was questioning Renard about them. I'm going to read you a quote from ABC 13 in their interview with Ezra Washington. Patricia's brother told police that the couple had been arguing about their lack of intimacy and Patricia's suspicions that Renard was possibly back on steroids and or having an affair. According to the court documents, he added that he talked with Renard three times in the hours before the shooting. Renard reportedly told him things like, she's counting my pills, low testosterone medication, claiming that I'm sleeping with someone else. I never thought he would go that far, Patricia's brother Ezra Washington told ABC 13. I should have acted on it, and that's going to eat me up for a long time, forever. But him saying that and then acting on it, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Officers at the scene noted that Renard outweighed Patricia by about 100 pounds and appeared to be an avid bodybuilder with weightlifting trophies spotted in his home. Patricia leaves behind a daughter, Patrina Marshall. She was my cushion when things were hard, Marshall told ABC 13. She was my friend when I needed to vent, my hands when I needed, to, when I needed help. But most of all, that woman is my mother. During the fight, documents say Washington told investigators his sister Patricia suspected Renard was back on steroids or having an affair. Washington says he talked to Renard on the phone for hours before the shooting and now regrets he didn't do more. And she takes me, I didn't, I didn't call back. You know, that still kind of bothers me. It's hard, but um, life goes on. You know, we gotta live not just for for us now, we live for her. Ezra didn't take the threat seriously, but is now wishing that he had intervened. Spivey had confided in him on numerous occasions about his wishes to hurt Patricia. But her brother didn't think anything of it other than a couple spat. Patricia is gone now, and he is left with the consequences of his inaction. To be fair to Ezra, he has suffered two heart attacks, and I don't think that he would have been a match for Renard. It just sucks. The only person to blame is the murderer. This case is out because there's very little updates on Renard. Some sources say that Renard was found guilty and sentenced to 14 years in prison, while others report that he received a life sentence. He is currently sitting in the Harris County Jail in Texas and serving whatever sentence he has received. I'm not sure what it is because the court updates don't say. There isn't much information on Renard Spivey, on Renard Spivey after he posted bail. I've been searching all week for information and have hit a wall. But there is some random, just a random thing. And that is that Renard's ex-wife, I think it's the second wife, although he has children with the first and second wife, sued him in court for neglecting his daughter. And Renard was ordered to pay her $10,000. And that's all I got for you. <laughs> I'm out.